How's it going guys, how all are we doing? Welcome to a new video tutorial on the series of making a blockchain on Node.js with MongoDB. So in the last video tutorial we've stopped when we actually save the block, we mined the block after checking if the block is mined, all of that, and we just like called the MongoDB model to save it into the actual MongoDB. Here we are using the Mongo campus to see the actual GUI thing uh, of our saved data in there, our saved block to per se. So as you can see, this is the block. Uh, it has a timestamp, has transitions, which is, uh, you know, empty for now since it's just for testing purposes, the ID and everything. The only problem in here we've got and we faced in the last video tutorial is the previous hash doesn't match. As you can probably see, as you can see, this is the first block gets added into the chain, while the second one should, like the previous hash attribute, point into the first uh, block's hash. Why it doesn't? It just points into a null. Just simply like this. So this is the problem. This is what we're gonna work on in today's video. So we're just gonna go ahead and try to link the uh, blocks together by you know providing the previous blocks hash into the actual to the current hash and just trying to link it together by just going ahead and querying the actual database to see if the database has any blocks or something like this. We can grab the actual hash of the block and we can obviously assign it to the new block we wanna add into the actual database. Simple as this. So let's just go ahead and start with, with this and we want to like add a new function into the blockchain uh, or new method to better say into the blockchain class that can help us to get the last block so get the last block added or save it into the database so we can hash this block and obviously or we can just get like the hash of them from this block and very simply the hash that we added in the last video story with the hash property or we can just hash it using calling the function and we're going to need to query the mongodb uh, database for this job so we're going to need to get the last block so let's say get last block from db in here so you can probably understand um let's say we want to like you know return the block so uh the get the last block it needs to take a callback so why it takes a callback so uh you know that mongodb is an asynchronous database so you probably just when you like your know, request getting a block you're going to need to register a callback for it so when the block is ready for you or when the database has found the block for you or has found the document for you it's just gonna like call the callback passing to you the actual document or the actual block that has been uh, found by it so you can probably just use this block and layer on and do, do whatever with it so what we want in here is so we need to this callback whenever the block is ready and the database has got us the block so we can just go ahead and you know like use the block and hash it so therefore we're going to need to use the the actual blockchain model the model like we have to use it up here so we're going to need to do this and going to use to find one so you probably know that we want to find only one block the last block so we're gonna say find one and we're gonna like you know find everything uh we're here just ignore everything we're gonna use a function called sort this sort function gonna allow us to sort it either uh like you know by by specific thing like by date or by id or i don't know by specific attribute that you've already added just for this sorting i'm gonna go ahead and grab the last block which means the last block that has been added into the database so i'm gonna start like say sort and you know when you when you say sort to this uh where probably you can use this function but you can use something different than this function you can just pass in all the parameters to the actual one function which is way way, way much better uh, i'm just gonna say no for the second one and the third one is like a configuration object as i've told you so i'm gonna say sort in here and the sort is, is, is an actual object so you sort it by id i'm gonna tell it to start from minus one why tell it from minus one minus one basically means start from the end and go up so we want to get the last block which means minus one just gonna get us the last block from from the database if you want to get the uh the block after or before the last one you're gonna just go ahead and type in here minus two and it's just gonna go into uh, grab the uh, the block before the last one and so on and so forth so you can you got the you got the point pretty much just by using the minus in here you're telling it to start from the end you can use or remove the minus to tell it to start from the beginning and so on and so forth so this is the basics of mongodb in here so as you can see here we we tell it to start from from the from the last thing and we're going to just limit it so why limit it so we're just going to like make sure it's just going to return one single block so we're just going to say one and it's just going to this one would like pretty much return one single block and as you probably know 
we're gonna take a callback this callback is gonna have the block first and the second thing is gonna have an error so you can you can check for this one or vice versa I'm sorry so the error and the block so first we need to check if there is any error all we're gonna need to do is just return console.error that we have um, you know cannot find find last block or something for on the database why we why we actually using the return in here so just to get out of the function to stop execution or something and here we obviously just gonna return the callback and pass into the callback the block that we have got in there as simple as this so as you can see this is the function gonna allow us to go ahead and synchronously uh, you know request from the database the block the database is just gonna go fetch us the block and run the callback for us passing is the block that he, he just found as simple as this now we can use this whenever the hash or whenever the block is mined successfully uh, here as you can see we are block dot hash we just send in the block hash now before saving before doing anything else we have to get the last block uh, hash so we can set it to the new block we want to add uh, as the previous attributes you know what I mean so I'm just gonna say last uh, block equals to no first and here we're gonna need to go ahead and call the get last block so the get last block remember it takes a callback and it's just gonna grab us the block so whenever you're ready what I'm gonna do is just gonna say last block equals to the block or we can just simply go ahead and put everything in here in this callback so whenever we get the last block we are going to simply uh, like register to the database or something so I'm just gonna say or let's go ahead and whenever we get this um, going to Okay, I'm just gonna copy all of those things, and um, obviously, I'll just go ahead and call this. So we've got a, like the last block and something, and we can just use it right away. So we can we can save it. So here what we are simply doing is getting the last block. We wait for the function. We assign a callback. This callback gonna return us the block. Then later on, we're just gonna go ahead and save and do all the different things. Now for the block, the actual block. Uh, since we have a block in here called so I don't want to call this uh, a block so I'm just gonna call it last block I'm just gonna get rid of this one so since we don't need it anymore and here I'm gonna say block dot previous hash so I'm just gonna set it to hashing the actual block so the block that we have got right now I'm just gonna say last block and it should just do do the job by grabbing the last block you're just gonna hash it and everything should go pretty much fine and afterwards we're just gonna go ahead and like as we did the last time we create an instance we save it to the database and we add the block into the chain now the other case as you can see in here whenever we get the last block this means if, we're, if we can take a look on the actual thing in here uh, only when we are actually calling the callback is only when uh, we have a valid block but let's say we don't have a valid block like let's say there is an error or something and the block is empty or there is no block or something so you're gonna need to like have a specific thing so you're gonna go ahead out of this uh, last block thing and we're gonna need to check so here first things first we're gonna need to check if last block is valid and everything so you need to make sure the, the last block is is not equal to null and defined because MongoDB whenever it doesn't find something you request from the th from the actual database it's just gonna return to you null so you have to check against this or an empty array to per se so you have to check this using an if statement if it works if it not so here as you can see the last block and we're gonna need to do this like in here uh, the last block hash so I'm um, just gonna say set the previous hash into the, the, the new hash otherwise I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with the new thing with with no problems pretty much so as you can see in here but for this case so whenever we actually we are hashing the last block in here we've got a problem since we already added a hash attribute that we shouldn't have just for testing purposes into the actual block so which means when we grab this block this all of this data and we hash it the hash that we're gonna get right over here that you're gonna assign to the previous hash is gonna be completely different from the hash right over here so yeah as you can see a problem so we need to remove this one uh, or do like do a more checking or stuff like this but in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and point to this one instead of rehashing it or something since we have already got the attribute and we have already set the attribute uh, when when we try to like save the first block so we can just go ahead point into this attribute and we can get it without rehashing the whole block so we can simply get last block and we say the actual last blocks 
hash and we set it to the, to the, the new block previous hash attribute and everything should go pretty much fine. Now saving this one, uh, let me just go ahead and pull off a terminal and make sure to like MongoDB is running, the service is running and make sure to pull off the um, campus to see actually everything in action and see the actual database and see your data. Now running the node main digest, now it's like, you know, simply hashing in different things and you can get block saved on database. You can go ahead and check out the database quickly. Um, let me just go ahead and make sure to refresh everything whenever you try to do something, whenever you do a brand new save or something like this. If you can take a look on the last block, so we take a look on the previous hash, as you can see, it's not null anymore. And you can clearly see that the hash of the previous block is identical to the previous hash of the current block that we have or the new block that we have added into the database. So as you can clearly see that this one is clearly linked to this one with no problems. So now you, you have no worries about uh, corrupting the actual blockchain or something like this or losing the blockchain order or whatever. So everything is linked. Each block is linked to the last blocks. Uh, whenever you're trying to save it on a database or you like just create the instance, it's gonna save this right for you. So you can see the hash is identical to the previous hash and obviously the current blocks hash is different and so on and so forth. So you can clearly notice this by just going in like, you know, like removing everything in here, removing the null from here and it should work pretty much fine for you if you're trying to remove this one and remove this one. As you can see, try go ahead and rerun everything from, from the beginning if we try node main.js, hash and everything, the database is saving, refresh, and here we go. We've got that. So we can take a look in this one, and this one, the hash of the previous block is identical. So everything is linked, and you can add as many as you want. You can add another block, you can mine as many as you want, and everything should be linked together with no problem, like a real blockchain. So hopefully now you guys understand actually how, how it works with no problems. As you can see, it's links for the whole blockchain is linked with a database. With, without a database, everything is working pretty much fine. You can add now transaction, you can add other data or custom data, you can save it in the blockchain. You can you can, you can can do a hell of a lot of things with this blockchain technology thing. It's just such an important thing to learn and such an important thing to implement. So hopefully guys, you've enjoyed today's video. So that was a really quick thing. I uh, just really, really want to point it to the actual thing, the last block and stuff like this. So that was a really quick, not that much of a thing, not much of information to guess, but that was a really important to point out. You can, you know, go ahead and take this blockchain, make it to the next level. You can add more features to it. You can add uh, more functionalities. You can, you know, add more database support and stuff like this. And I don't know, let me know in the comments. I'll be very, very happy to let your thoughts or let your, uh, I don't know, know about your and your ideas or your thoughts or something like this. I'll be very happy to do this, guys. So thank you guys for watching this again. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe for more video tutorials and push that like button, you know, if you liked it. If you don't, the dislike is there. So yeah, see you all guys in the next video tutorial.